Hello and welcome back to Geordie Leather. Today we're going to be covering the subject of finishing. Finishing the surface of leather to give it some protection from the elements, waterproofing it, polishing, buffing it, etc. So we've looked at things like cutting, dyeing and other processes of leather. This is the final stage in any project. Once you've produced your project you want to finish it so it looks a bit more professional and it's protected from the, the weather. So we look at different types of finishes on the market. If we come across to the workbench camera, we can see here's a very small selection. There are literally dozens, if not more, types of creams, polishes, waxes, finishes that can be applied to leather. These are some of the ones I use and we'll go through these one by one. So like I say, with leather, we've dealt with preparing the edges and burnishing the edges and we could come on to actually painting the edges in a moment but finishing generally is for finishing the surfaces of leather so this is a piece of black dyed black veg tan leather nothing's been done to it so it's got a slight shine to it but that's just from taking off the surplus dye residue with a cloth so we put some finish onto that and you can see the difference this is a piece of plain veg tan leather with nothing done to it other than the edges have been burnished you can see there's a nice polished edge there that's been done with the burnishing process shown in the previous video. So let's have a look at some of these different um, finishes. So one of the most common and popular finish is the Carnuba Cream. This is Phoebe's Carnuba Cream. It's basically uh, a liquid wax which you rub into the surface of leather and that gives it a nice sheen very easy to use and very popular. Um, if you're wanting more of a, a waterproof protection, something like Resoline. Resoline is good for giving a not waterproof but water resistant finish to leather. It would keep off raindrops etc things like that. So Resoline it's a, a liquid has a blue tint when you apply it but dries totally clear. Uh, tan coat is another very common uh, finishing chemical. It's a bit viscous and it applies a fairly sort of sticky layer once you put it on with a wall daub and you need to be careful not to get any streaks in it when it dries. But again it gives a general tough coating to leather so it's commonly used. If you have something like this, this is for example a wet moulded piece of leather for a leatherman uh, multi-tool I'm in the process of making. So the leather has been soaked in water and then stretched across a form which can take out some of the natural oils and good stuff in the leather. So it's recommended that we apply something called neat's foot oil. Now neat's foot is the bones of the shin and the feet of cattle which produces this neat's foot oil and this is good for restoring the natural oils from the leather which have been lost during the wet moulding process. So that's something that's used for that. Um, <clears throat> like I say, that covers the surfaces of leather, but we can also give up some protection to the edges with something called edge coat. Now edge coat is basically a paint designed for painting the edges of leather. This is black, but it comes in a massive range of colours, uh, some quite weird, but we'll use black today. And what all, all that basically does is put a nice coating over the burnished surface which protects it and gives it a, a matte sort of sheen. You can buff it to a higher sheen if you wanted to. So it's often good when you've got not a particularly good edge, you've done the best you can to sand it and burnish it but it's not a perfect edge so the edge coat paint will mask any imperfection so it's good from that point of view. So one other thing you can do with edges is just to take some simple beeswax to rub it over the edge and then to buff it with a clean cloth and that will give it a waxy coating which will assist in protecting it during its lifetime. So let's get started and do a bit of finishing. Okay so we'll start the process with some um, surface finishing. We'll take the most popular the thing I use the most often which is the Carnuba cream and we'll apply some of that. So just look at the surface first. It's fairly flat, there's no real sheen to it. 
So let's supply some Canuba clean. So just take a clean cloth and just give the cream a little bit of a stir or shake and <clears throat> just form a small wad, tip it on and then just gently rub it into the, into the uh, leather. Now you'll see that the leather will darken slightly when you do that but it'll do that with any sort of liquid applied to it but as always it will clear it'll dry clear and it will lighten up again so put some on and then wait a few seconds and then you can just polish it off with a, a dry piece of cloth like so so let's have a look at the close-up you can see there's not a lot of difference but there is a slight sheen there as it dries out you can buff that again you can buff with um, a cloth or you can use a traditional shoe brush um, I often use this as a final buffing so you can just go over with your brush and that will bring up the sheen even further now it's not a massive difference with the Conubra cream but it is popular and I use it a lot so if you're wanting a more resilient finish then let's take a smaller piece of leather just as a sample you can apply something like um, resiline now this is best applied with a dauber over out so gentle stir you want to avoid getting air bubbles into your um, mixture so don't stir them too viciously rapidly so just dip in your little clean dauber wipe off the excess and then apply it See, it's got a slight blue tinge to it. If you can see that on the camera. Like so. There's a slight blue tinge to it, but it does dry clear, so that will evaporate and give it some waterproofing protection. Uh, we'll put that to one side. Take another piece. This is a sample piece and we'll apply some tan coat see this is quite sticky viscous um, material so a different clean dauber and just take a little bit of the tan coat and apply that in the same manner you see it's a lot thicker And you really need to be careful to make sure you don't get any bumps because it will dry as it's applied and any streaks or bumps will harden so as we can see here again it's got quite a unpleasant smell as well that so not one of my favorite finishes okay um, so we've covered the basics like I say, Neat's Foot Oil is just an oil, so you wouldn't see any difference in the change in colour or anything else really. So it's not really worth showing that, it's just an oil which you rub into the leather. So um, we'll do some, we'll go back to the original veg tan, which is now dry. It's got, a, it feels a bit glossier. There isn't a, a big difference in sheen, maybe slightly, you can see it there. We say once it's allowed to totally dry, give it a good buff and it will bring that sheen a bit higher so let's do some edge coating now now you can apply edge coat with a small brush um, a dauber or you can use a special tool which is designed for edge coat application it's basically a little metal wheel which rotates so you can dip that into your paint and it will rotate as you drag it along the surface of the leather so again it's a gentle stir Never shake 
edge coat because that will introduce bubbles into the liquid which will be would spoil your effect your paint finish very much so so um we just take our piece of leather and we'll be painting the edge so we're going to dip you know here we are we're going to dip this little rotating wheel into the leather don't go too deep just enough to cover the wheel so as you can see it's quite a, a thick paint and we're just going to apply that keep the surface of the wheel flat against the leather and just roll it along like so and that's basically it you can see you've got a nice even coat there no spillage over onto the the uh, pretty side or the flesh side so this does take a little while to dry if you miss a bit just go over it back and forward with a wheel so you can use a brush or a dauber but you get the best effect with this sort of tool um, so try and keep your piece upright until the, the paint has a chance to dry it only takes a few minutes but if you land inside it may drip so try and keep it upright I'm going to prop it up against my tripod so we'll do the same with the black so here's a, a piece of black I, I haven't burnished this edge so give me one second and I'll quickly do that okay so now I have a nicely a nice burnished polished edge and we'll just do exactly the same with the the edge coat paint so apply some to your applicator and then just keeping it level with the surface, roll along so you've got a nice even edge paint. So there we have it. So that's edge coat paint. That'll dry. It's slightly shiny when it's first applied, but it'll dry slightly duller. But you can buff it afterwards once it's hardened properly. So just clean off the tool, get rid of all the excess paint. Otherwise it won't work as well when you come to use it again. Make sure there's no paint trapped in those little notches in the tool tip. I'll just use disposable uh, makeup remover pads because they're so cheap, but they're very useful, but easily removed. So that's that. So that's it for edge and surface finishing techniques. Not a difficult subject but something that's useful to know so that's it for the general um, tutorials around leather work next story we're going to start on stitching which is a big part of leather work and we'll be showing you the different types of tools required to stitch the different techniques and the different kinds of stitches so tune in next time and we'll see you then don't forget to click the like button if you enjoy this video and if you can Please subscribe, it does help the channel a great deal if you can click that subscribe button. And uh, we look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Until then, bye bye.